So what are threads? Threads are the basic transport system of your application. They carries your request from the start to end and they will also decide the performance of your application. Based on the number of threads that you have in your application, obviously the performance of your application will be boosted up. So start increasing the number of threads and enjoy the application. But this is not true every time because in the system engineering world, we have some limitations too. So we have some kind of pros and cons with the number of threads and we have to actually provide a balance between the number of threads per application. So in the next 10 minutes, I'll be talking about a few of the uh, major concepts that you can take away while deciding the performance of your application. So let's get started. Okay, so I said that uh, you can increase the number of threads to improve the application's performance. So suppose I have an application and that is running on a system having only one CPU. Now, let's suppose there is a request that is landed on your application and that is being processed by one CPU. It's totally fine. Your CPU is capable to serve that request because at a time it has to serve only one request. But as and when the request started to increase, let's suppose there are four requests coming to your application and there is only one CPU. So in that case, the CPU need to be shared between all those requests. And by the way, these all requests are coming at the same time. Okay. So in this case, the sharing will happen and the CPU will actually do the context switching between all these request threads. It has to actually remember what exactly it was doing on a thread before switching to the next thread. So that whenever it has to roll back on the previous thread, uh, the CPU should be aware that from where exactly it has to start. Okay. So in that way, the CPU has a over burden in this case because it has to do context switching. Also, it has to remember uh, the threads information also. So this is totally fine, but uh, when you uh, this type of application will actually uh, face a problem when you have number of users who are actually hitting your application. Okay, so by the way, this particular type of model is known as thread per request model. So you are actually assigning a particular request a thread, right? So each and every request is using a thread and uh, that's why it is called a thread per request model. Okay, so the another possibility here is obviously uh, most of you might be thinking that we can increase the number of CPU here. Okay, so that is totally fine. Uh, let's suppose we are increasing the number of CPU here. So for four requests, I'll be having a system with four CPU and I'll be assigning each request to each CPU. So that's way I can achieve that performance uh, boost that I was looking for because each and every request is going to a different CPU. There is no context switching. There is no overburden on the CPU. All are happy. But there is also a problem, right? we have a resource limitation you can't assign as many cpu to as many requests in real world i was taking an example of only four requests but it can be 400 also so there is obviously a some kind of threshold we have to manage and after that we cannot actually spin up as many cpu as we want right so this was thread per request model by the way and uh, where this particular situation on the right is actually known as the parallel processing okay and the, this particular thing on the left is known as the concurrent processing so you are using the same cpu shared among multiple requests but you are doing a context switching you are actually making the user feel like that 
you are actually processing everything parallel but behind the scene you are doing a concurrent processing but on the right hand side you are actually assigning as many cpu so you are uh, really doing a parallel processing parallel processing is uh, is limited and it's not a real world solution obviously the concurrency is the real world solution okay so this was about the thread per request model obviously uh, even the, in case of concurrency you have a limitation that after a certain point after a certain load on your application you can't uh, process that many requests because as and when more, more users started to use your application they will started to feel a kind of lag in your in the response because there is only one CPU which is processing all those requests. Okay. How exactly the thread per request model is the process? I was saying that uh, as and when the load on your system started to increase, your system user will start to feel a lag in the response for sure. So because all the requests are using the same CPU. So there is some kind of sharing and every request thread will get its chance one by one. So let's suppose your application is also dependent on other application to process any request. It could be database, it could be any other uh, application or maybe the file processing. So in those cases, your request which is landing on your CPU will be forwarded to another application right so let's suppose this is another app so in such cases the thread which is processing that request will goes on wait it is it will not be able to serve any other further request so suppose in your application you only have four threads available to process all the requests and one thread is just waiting on another application to get the response then that thread is gone you just left with only three threads so now those three threads need to serve further request also so this problem can get severe when all the requests are actually dependent on other system to process your request so in such kind of situation all requests Thread will be blocked on other application and those will be idle those will be waiting for the response and they can't even further process any request coming to the system so in such cases thread for request model is not the solution because you are somehow blocking your application on other application and you are all the threads are blocked and this is why most of the application in the current world are facing this kind of problem that uh, whenever the so the load is increasing on their system and our system is dependent on other one they actually doesn't do it properly uh, you will not get any response from them so what is the solution in such cases so in such cases uh, there is a solution that we have to design a system where the threads are non-blocking okay so for that uh, we can use the event loop model so in event loop model, there will be only single thread per CPU, okay? So what it will do, it will actually get the request, goes to the CPU, it will process this, uh, process this request from the CPU, and whenever it has to go to another application to process that request, it will actually assign a callback here. Callback means, uh, it will tell the CPU that whenever the request response is ready, just call back me on this particular instruction, right? So in such cases, uh, the thread will be available to process for the request. It is not actually waiting on the other application to get the response, but it actually assigning a callback which will be available only and only when the response is available from the third application okay so this way uh, the event loop model is actually a non-blocking model this actually solves the issue which we were facing in thread per request model but yeah 
uh, if we have number of request right and uh, suppose we have a very uh, algorithmic kind of application where we have a huge processing involved yeah uh, there is no third party or third application involved only the cpu processing is required that means we, you have a very long algorithm and that you have to process as part of that request then obviously this kind of event loop model will not work because in that case uh, all the requests are landing on the same event loop and event loop is actually processing that request for a long time and it can't for the take any further request okay so event loop model is only suitable in the cases where your application is majorly dependent on the other system for the request processing and the thread for request model is suitable for those applications where your uh, application is majorly dependent on its own processing i hope that makes sense so how you can decide whenever you are actually calculating the response time of your request the c what made what percentage of your response time is being consumed by your own cpu or your own application cpu and what percentage of your response time is being consumed by the other systems maybe database or other third party or maybe file processing so based on that you can decide which model is good for your application so this was all about thread i know this is only the starting point but yeah that will be the basic for improving your system's application performance see you in the next video thanks for today